Hi, I'm Lee Tushler, Executive Editor of Design World Magazine and EE World. And I'm Kelsey Ferrante, Associate Editor. There's been a lot of discussion in the media about privacy and home appliances that listen to conversations. Today we've got a voice-enabled toy that has been part of the controversy. The Hello Barbie doll uses Wi-Fi and speech recognition technology to engage in a two-way dialogue. You start a conversation by pressing a button built into her belt buckle. And I guess pushing on her belt buckle is better than pushing on her belly button. <laughs> you press the button to start the conversation and release it to hear Barbie respond. Right. Barbie actually works a lot like a push-to-talk walkie-talkie, so you don't have to worry about Barbie listening in surreptitiously on what you say, despite reports in the media to the contrary. To get the doll to respond to speech, Barbie's creator, Mattel, worked with a company called Toy Talk to come up with 8,000 lines of dialogue for Barbie. Barbie's dialogue is actually stored in the cloud, so you need a constant connection to the internet for her to say anything interesting. What Barbie does is listen to what you say, try to understand some key words, and then select a piece of dialogue that would make sense in context. We tried talking to Barbie with varying levels of success. Let's make today a career day. How about today we imagine another career you might like to have? Just for fun. What do you think? Sounds great. You can never have too many careers. Believe me, I know. Okay, so, oh, what about being a doctor? How does that sound? That sounds awesome. Yay! So, what do you think would be one of the best things about being a doctor? Saving people's lives. Yeah, it's such an important job. One thing that's obvious from seeing typical interaction with the Barbie is that Mattel won't have the same kinds of problems that arose when Microsoft unveiled Tay, a Twitter bot described as an experiment in conversational understanding. When people tweeted at the bot with misogynistic and racist remarks, Tay started tweeting back those sentiments. Well, you don't have to worry about that, about Barbie parroting back profanities or anything like that. All she can do is say things from a memorized list. But I must say that I was disappointed in Barbie when I watched you interact with her. She comes across as more of a teacher than a playmate for a kid. She seems to keep trying to steer the conversation directions you might find during a kindergarten class, so I think a lot of kids will find Barbie is annoying and they'll get tired of her pretty quickly. So you may have an annoying Barbie rather than a hello Barbie. Well, I got tired of her pretty quickly myself, but I don't really count. Why don't we take a look inside Barbie? It turns out there isn't much to Barbie's electronics. She has a lithium ion battery in one of her legs that you recharge by setting Barbie in her stand and plugging her in. So there's no wireless charging here. The top of the board holds an Azure Wave Wi-Fi microcontroller module built on a widely used Marvell microcontroller called the 88MW300 that implements an ARM Cortex M4F processor. So the Marvel chip handles both the Wi-Fi connection as well as running the code for the rest of Hello Barbie's functions. A 24-bit audio codec from Nuvotan also sits on the board. It provides an analog-to-digital and digital-to-analog conversion and input-output mixers for both the doll's microphone and speaker. The other significant chip on the board is a 16-megabit SPI flash from a Giga device in China. It serves as the system's main non-volatile memory. Does the flash memory store audio from people talking to Barbie? Actually, no. The doll uses Wi-Fi to send that information to the cloud to figure out what to say. But that also means you have to pair Barbie with a mobile phone app, which lets Barbie associate with your Wi-Fi and the Toy Talk account. After that, Barbie mainly beams data back and forth with Toy Talk servers, doing all its storage and data processing in the cloud. Now, according to security experts who've looked at Barbie, one good thing about that scheme is that it's tough for a hacker to compromise things. Barbie stores network SSIDs and passwords on her flash, but the passwords are encrypted in the doll's memory and are difficult to extract. And the only way a hacker could really get at the audio recordings could be through a data breach of the Toy Talk website. But that sort of eavesdropping would require the hacker to generate a valid ToyTalk.com certificate which apparently is not easy. So parents shouldn't worry about bad guys getting a hold of whatever their kid says to Barbie. The chances of that seem slim, but though the voice processing is pretty sophisticated, the construction of the doll itself is on the primitive side. 
For example, basking tape is one of the doll's construction materials. The tape is used to hold a clear plastic shield in place over part of the circuit board. The wiring in the doll for the speakers and battery connection connects to the circuit board through connectors, but the wiring comes to the board at odd angles, so you get the impression that there is just a lot of hand assembly involved in putting Barbie together. With that, we're going to say goodbye to Hello Barbie. You can see more teardown videos at eeworldonline.com.